I'm Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, Welcome to, to Physics, Physics with Beth and Beth. <laughs> Hello everyone. Welcome back to Physics with Beth and Beth. I'm Beth, and today we are starting off our discussion of AP Physics 1, Unit 3, which is a discussion of work, energy, and power. And today we are just getting started off with a discussion of work. So, best place to begin is, well, what is work? I have the definition behind me on the board right here. And so work is the transfer of energy to an object when a force is applied. Now, the second part of that definition probably feels pretty okay with you. When a force is applied. Well, we just spent an entire unit, all of unit two, talking about when forces are applied. So that part's probably pretty okay. But the first part of that definition, the transfer of energy to an object, that might be a little weird for some of you because we haven't talked about energy yet. Energy is the second concept that we'll talk about in this unit after we finish the concept of work. Now we're doing things in this order because this is the order a lot of you guys might be doing them in your AP Physics 1 classes. A lot of teachers like to do work first because it deals with applications of forces, a concept that you guys are already really strong on. But if the idea that you don't really know what energy is yet just isn't sitting well with you, feel free to skip ahead, watch our videos on energy, and then come back and rejoin us here. But for now, we're just going to dive right into a discussion of work. And we're just going to have to be okay for a little bit with our understanding of energy being limited to the thing that is transferred to an object when force is applied. The thing that is given to an object whenever we do work. So let's get started on figuring out how to calculate work. So the symbol that we use to represent work is just a capital W. Thankfully, that's pretty intuitive, unlike some of the other symbols that we'll get to later. And we calculate it a couple of different ways. I'm going to start out by writing the equation that my fellow Beth and I like, and then we'll go into the equation that's on y'all's AP Physics 1 equation sheet. My fellow Beth and I have a lot of opinions on exactly that, equ that equation and how it should be written, so we're going to get started off with the one that we like, and then we'll go into the one that we don't like, and hopefully everything will make sense. So work is equal to the parallel component of force times your displacement. Where when I say parallel here, I mean the component of your force that is parallel to your displacement. So first, let's talk about the units of this. Well, the units of force are newtons. The units of displacement are meters. And so the units of work are newton meters. There are a couple of different ways we can write the same unit, though. Newtons are also equal to kilogram meters per second squared times meters. So we can also write out the units of work as kilogram meters squared per second squared. Or we can just simply say, hey, this is equal to one joule. The joule is an honorary unit. We represent it by a capital J. And it is named after a pretty cool guy named James Prescott Joule, who did some cool science back in the day, just like me who did some cool science. So if you feel like giving his Wikipedia Goodness gracious, talking is hard. If you feel like giving his Wikipedia page a read, then go on and check it out. But for now, just know that the joule is named after him. And when I say joule, I mean kilogram meters squared per second squared or newton meters. So those are the units of, um, of work here. Okay, but when I say the parallel component of force, what do I mean by that? Well, say I have a little box here and I am giving it a pull on, um, I have a rope attached and I'm pulling on a rope here. So this is the force of my pull. And as I pull on the box with this rope, it is moving to the right. So this is my delta x here, my displacement. So because my displacement is in my right direction here, going east, the only portion of my force that is doing work, that is giving energy to this box, is the portion of my pull that is pointing in the same direction as my displacement. So in this case, it's going to be the x component of my pull here, so the force of my pull in the x direction, because that is what is parallel to my displacement. So if I were trying to calculate my work that I'm doing with my pull here, I would calculate my x component of the force of my pull, which we would just do using a little bit of trig. We would find this angle here, say, okay, well, what is the force of my x component? Well, here I'm going to want to be using 
adjacent and hypotenuse, so that's cosine of theta. So my force in my x direction times the cosine of theta. I'm sorry. So my x component of my force is equal to my overall pull times cosine of theta. And then I'm going to multiply that times my displacement. And that would give me my work. Now, this is where we get into the equation that you're going to be seeing on your AP Physics 1 equation sheet, which is that work is equal to force times distance times cosine of theta. Now, the reason that my fellow Beth and I don't like this equation is one, this D is a really silly letter. In calculus, D means um, a differential, and we're not doing calculus here. And then also D stands for distance, which is a scalar, and force is a vector. So whenever we multiply force, a vector, and a scalar together, our answer should also be a vector. But work is a scalar quantity. And in fact, all energy measurements are going to be scalar quantities. So that's something really important I want you guys to know about work. Work is a scalar. So here, yes, I can get a positive or negative value for work. If my work is negative, that means I'm taking energy away from an object. If my work is positive, that means I'm giving energy to an object. So here I have my box and I'm pulling on it here on the top and I'm causing my object to move. I'm going to get a positive value here for the x component of the force of my pole, and my displacement has a positive value here as well. So that means I'm going to be getting a positive value of work that I'm doing. I'm adding energy to my box. However, if this box is sliding across the ground, it also has the force of friction that is opposing that movement, right? So let's say that this is kinetic friction. Excuse me. So the force of kinetic friction, well, how much work is this doing? Well, I'm going to take the component of that force that's parallel to my displacement, which thankfully is just my kinetic friction, so I don't have to do any math over there, and multiply it by delta x. So here I'm going to be getting a negative force, let's see, work done by my friction, is going to be equal to this force, and the component of it that's parallel means I'm going to pick up a negative sign because it's pointing in the opposite direction of my displacement. So negative force kinetic times delta x. So here I have this friction doing a negative work, which means I'm taking energy away from my box. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's the idea that my work can be positive or negative, and unlike when we were dealing with forces, my negative sign doesn't mean direction, it means I'm taking energy away from the system. Here I had a negative force that was implying my direction was going this way, right? But now my work ends up with a negative. It's a scalar, it doesn't have a direction. But So instead the negative sign means that I'm taking energy away. Are you with me so far? Okay, well, um, one other point I wanted to talk about before we move on. Oh. Back to this equation real quick. So one of the things that we didn't like was that we have f times d, both of these distance is a scalar, force is a vector, and so this should give you a vector, but work is a scalar. Anyway, um, the other thing that can be confusing about this equation is cosine theta. Depending on how you measure theta, the component of your force that's parallel to your displacement might not be calculated by cosine theta. Let's say that I gave you the angle measuring the force uh, measuring the direction of the force of my pole here from the y-axis. See, I measured this theta here. Then to calculate the x component of the force of my pole, I would use sine theta if my angle was measured like this. So whenever students just see cosine of theta, they often don't think about how this can change based on how theta is measured, but it can. So just keep that in mind whenever you're using this equation. What exactly this theta is meaning and why you're using it well, this cosine theta is to isolate the component of your force that is parallel to your displacement. All right, let's move on. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about, okay, only the parallel component of my force, that's the only aspect of force that I consider, right? That's the only part of my force that does any work. So for example, on my box here, I've got gravity pulling it down. We're going to assume we're not in space. So I've got the force of gravity here. Let me erase some of this. 
I've got the force of gravity pulling down, and I have the normal force pushing back upward, keeping it from plummeting all the way to the center of the Earth. So the force of gravity is perfectly straight down, and the direction of the movement of my box is perfectly to the east. So if I look at the component of my force of gravity that is parallel to my displacement here, that's zero. There is no component of gravity here that is, has anything to do with the direction that we're moving in. And so here the force of gravity is actually doing no work. So perpendicular forces do no work. We're going to pretend that that's a pretty square and not a really wonky trapezoid that I just drew there. Okay, so perpendicular forces do no work. Another thing that doesn't do work is if you apply a force, but if you don't actually have any movement. So I can stand here and push against this wall for hours, push against this wall until my arms are shaking and I'm sweating buckets. But if the wall doesn't actually move, then my displacement is zero and I've done no work. So that's one place where the way that we often talk about work, whenever we're just speaking with one another using the common definition of work versus the physics definition of work, those two things are different. Just because something is hard, just because you're really putting a lot of effort into something, if it's not moving, there's no work that's being done. So if your force is perpendicular to the movement of an object, then no work is being done. And if an object isn't moving at all, if there is no displacement, then no work is being done. All right, that is everything really. We have our force here. We talked about how we calculate the parallel component of a force, how we multiply that by our displacement, and how that does work. We talked about how the perpendicular forces do no work, and we talked about how if we have no movement, then no work is being done. So that's everything I have for y'all today. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I know this was a doozy. We're going to go through some practice problems on this together in the next few videos. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Y'all are troopers and happy physicsing.